Hey guys, so this is the Navis Works Batch Utility button. It's uh, another one of the tools within Navis Works. Um, not a lot of people talk about it, I don't think. I, at least I haven't seen a lot of use out of it. It it depends on your workflow. So primarily, what I do is I use an NWF file, and I automatically export out the NWCs from Revit. So I don't necessarily need to use use batch utility because I have other tools that can automatically export out NWCs but uh, it's really nice if you're sharing files with a sub consultant or general contractor or design firm or a client if you're sharing NWD files we can automatically export those out and um, um, you you know you can automate that entire thing so you don't have to worry about that so we can export out those NWFs, or I mean the NWDs, and we can also uh, create new NWFs. I'm not entirely sure why you would, you would want to do that, uh, just because uh, NWFs aren't necessarily different uh, from new one to new one. It's more or less the NWCs that would be linked into the NWF. So, <clears throat> a little bit about batch utility. It leverages the Windows Task Scheduler. So, if you are doing NWDs, you can set it up on a scheduled basis and then create those whenever you need, pretty much. And, uh, you know, you can use it. You can now use the batch utility to automate common file importing conversion processes. And then here's a couple links that you can click on to, to read a little bit more about it. This will take you to the Docs Scheduler, the Windows Task one, where you can learn a bit more about it. And then you can take a look at the Navisworks or the Autodesk Navisworks Batch Utility uh, definition and kind of some more information on that as well. So to find it, if you're on the Home tab, over here you have the Tools panel. And then you have batch utility right here. Pretty small button, uh, but it uh, definitely has some cool functionality with it. So this is what the dialog box looks like. So here we have the files. So we, we can browse out to the files that we essentially plan on converting into an NWD or an NWF. And you can see that over to the right. And then down here, we can either remove so these ones are the ones that uh, are actually added to create the nwf so we can remove these and then click up here to add them and then down here we have the output so we have as a single file or as multiple files and then we have down here the file version we can overwrite output files or we can increment output file names and then if we needed a log, it's down here as well. So I'm going to close PowerPoint. We can kind of take a look at it in Navisworks. So I have Navisworks open. This is 2018. And we have an NWF with just the advanced, so RAC, so the Architectural Advanced Sample Model from Autodesk. And then the MEP or the ME model from Autodesk as well. And I just had some some sample model I created just for fun, just to uh, test some stuff out. So I have that linked in as well. You'll have access to all the NWCs. Just click on the OneDrive link and then find the folder that's associated with this video. Uh, and do let me know if you have any issues with that link itself. And I'll make sure that it works. So we'll go ahead and click on the batch utility button and we can see this window pop open. We don't need to browse out to anything because it's already pathed correctly, but you can see how this kind of works. Uh, for the most part is I think it automatically goes to where the NWF is, which isn't a big deal, but you can see where browsing out to different drives and then the folders could be pretty annoying, but it is what it is. So after you get to your folder, so this is the NWC folder that you'll find in the uh, OneDrive. We can select on these and add them, but we don't need to. Uh, for example, if this was browsed out to the wrong location, we could remove all these, come up here, select the, the ones we actually care about, and then add files. And then we're good to go. 
down here we can either output as a single file or multiple files now we're going to do it as a single file and then what we'll do is we'll browse out to the above location so we'll go browse and you can see I've already done one so it's batch utility underscore test NWD so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this extension I'm going to come down here uh, after I exit out I'm going to paste it in here I'm going to put a backslash and I'm going to put capitalized BU underscore test dot NWD I want to make sure that's correct so I'm going to open it just make sure that we have everything the way that it's supposed to okay BU underscore test dot NWD you do have to make sure you do this uh, so either if you want to make an NWD or an NWF uh, just go in there and change that so in this example we're going to do an NWD since we already have one created we'll go ahead and change this overwrite output files to an increment and I find that this might be valuable depending on your workflow so one example was and kind of what I was thinking about was if I could find a way to automatically dump out uh, clash reports then what I would do is use batch utility to automatically after I have already had another platform automatically export out the NWCs I would then have batch utility create a new NWF and then increment the output files name and then have Python just automatically or something uh, automatically dump out that report and then Python read that report and then dump that into a database uh, so that's one one uh, way to look at using NWFs but uh, I'm sure there's many others as well so increment the NWD and then what we'll do is we'll make sure 2018 selected and then we'll just run the command and then we can open up that folder and then we can see that it creates the new NWD and it just puts 0001.NWD and then if we created it you, it sequentially just goes to the next number Now, if we want to log that event, we could click on this button and then browse out to where it's going to be. And then we can also click this overwrite. We're not going to take a look at the log. What we are going to take a look at is the schedule command. So we'll open this. All right, with this clicked, what we'll do is we'll save uh, in the same path. And then what it will do is it'll give us this prompt. I'm going to erase that. Uh, to put in a password so I'll say my password I'm gonna press enter and then here we have some options so we say run so it tells us the the actual information on what's the test or what the scheduled task is and then down here we can say start to end and then add some comments and then run as so it just looks at the user and then we can set a password Enable scheduled task runs at specific times. Run only if logged on. And then if we look at schedule, this is where we would actually schedule this. So you can see right now there's nothing there that we can select. So what we would do is come to new. And then we can set up on daily, weekly, monthly. So whatever works. Generally what I've seen is maybe weekly. And then uh, we leave it at 9 a.m. And then if we look at advanced, it just gives us some more options. So like end date, stuff like that. And, you know, we'll see traditionally like a Saturday because nobody's online. So for, I mean, it, it, for this process, since it has to run locally on your computer, but if you have a, a task computer, then I would imagine Saturday would be a good day to do it. So we say every one week, on Saturday and then we'll turn this off because we just have this one schedule that we want 
And then over here in settings, we have delete if not s scheduled to run again, if it runs over 72 hours, which is a very long time. Uh, and then some other options as well that you can take a look at. So with that schedule set up, what we can do is come down here and press apply. It'll prompt us for a password. And we can come in here and type one. And then press enter. And then we're good to go. We can press OK. And then essentially that task is now going to be ran on a weekly basis on Saturday at 9 a.m. So uh, hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of you know what you can leverage with the batch utility tool within Navisworks. Do let me know if you have any questions or comments. Let me know if there's anything else you want to learn. Uh, and I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this. See you in the next one.